Okay. What in the world then? No. Let's put this thing on this over. What's up, Deacon? If you can hear me, put that down there, please. I was trying to get my my other stuff working there, but I couldn't get it to work. Adam, I ain't too far from you. <laughs> I am not too far from you. Okay, the audio's good. All right. I'm down here in, uh, where am I at? Where we at, Bella? Groveport. We're down here in Groveport. Groveport, Ohio. At the Petro Choice. Indiana. What's going on, Miss Melanie? What's up, Mr. John? I tried getting y'all on my uh, my DJI here because it's got a live stream function on that thing and I could never get it to pull up. Adam, where you at in Columbus over there? Bell. You want to come hang out with the screen? Huh? Hmm? No, oh, hang on, I'm trying to figure this. I guess they updated the, the live stream stuff and it's got all different kind of stuff on the side of it now, so I'll just give me a second here. Hold on. Oh, that's what I want. All right. All right, let's see here. Hanging out in a dumpy pilot, huh? Yeah. Some pilots are a real dump hole. I call them pilots. What's going on? Uh, who's that? Freeway? Who are you? It looks like the same picture as somebody else. I'm dropping a local load in Maumee, Ohio tomorrow from Detroit. I picked up this load out here out of Port Island yesterday. My appointment yesterday morning was like 6.30 in the morning. I got down there and two of my products was not ready. So... I sat there from 6.30 in the morning till 1.30 the yesterday evening, which kind of is what it is. That's part of trucking. I mean, everybody knows that, but uh, I had another load to pick up out of Louisville in the morning going back down to Clanton, Alabama. I'm not going to be able to get that load because obviously I'm sitting here at the place to unload in the morning. So... They had to give that load to somebody else out of Louisville because I couldn't make it. I drive a bulk fuel truck. It's pretty good gig. 
uh, tanker chemicals. Hey Nancy, I seen you on another thing. I was trying to, I was trying to get the DJI thing to work for live streaming, but it wouldn't work. So, or I don't know if you could see me or not, or hear me or whatever. But uh, yeah, didn't get it to work. I wish I could have because uh, of course y'all can tell that I'm not in my truck. So uh, I ain't got no way to hold this camera up and keep it still. So uh, I was trying to use my DJI's to go live and it just they just wouldn't work. Those ain't turning, you ain't earning. That's exactly right. I thought there was no wait time hauling fuel. This ain't fuel, this is oil. I'm bringing oil up here. We do a lot of fuel hauling around the house, around Louisiana. When you see me around the house and stuff like that, that's what we're basically doing is hauling fuel around the house. But going out of state and stuff like this, we haul lube oils out of state. Well, lube oils and stuff, there's... It's about like anything else. There is waiting time. Uh, there is sometimes waiting time hauling gas and stuff too. If you ain't got no allocation at the loading racks or or if it's like state of emergency and stuff like that and there's uh, boo coodles of trucks at the rack, you can wait for hours and hours and hours and hours to get a load of fuel. Uh, so getting loaded tomorrow in Delaware, Ohio and sending her on down to Charlotte. I ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't either. I was trying to look at it and uh, off my phone, and I couldn't never get it to come off the, the waiting on me screen. I'm going to try to figure... I'm going to try to figure this thing out because it does take... It does do really, really good on... Uh, videoing and stuff like that and i'll be able to just sit it up i had it set up right there on the dash so that way uh excuse me that way uh y'all can see a bigger picture here instead of just looking straight at me uh gas stations i like gas stations Random guy asked, would you rather deliver to gas stations or bulk plants? I like gas stations. I don't know why. I guess it's the physical work, getting out, hustling, get it done, get it in the ground, and move on to the next one. I just like doing that. Uh, hey, Mike, first time tuning into a live. I appreciate it, Evan. What's going on from Kentucky, Mr. Marvin? I actually met a subscriber today, and uh, I don't know, Mr. John Alton, I don't know if you remember back when, when I first started making videos. Uh, I, made, I, I did a video when I first got rusty, and uh, I was talking about sliding the fifth wheel, and if you move it here and move it there to take weight off of here, put weight there, and all this and that stuff, and I had somebody correct me out in, the, in the comments, and uh, I sent him back a message in the comments, and I felt like I was being a little rude, but anyways, the following day, I stopped and got a scale ticket, and it proved that the commenter was right and I was wrong and I apologized to him. Ironically, I met that guy today in Jeffersonville at the TA in Jeffersonville, Ohio. I stopped to get fuel and get me a shower uh, before I come over here because I knew I was spending the night over here. And I met that man over there. Nice, beautiful Peter car that he had. And uh, that, that was pretty cool right there. What's up, Kevin? Oh, Rusty coming with that truck. Oh, Rusty, come on. With that truck, she runs pretty smooth. Yeah, Rusty runs pretty smooth. As y'all can tell, I'm not in Rusty right now. I'm in the I'm in the little the little red truck. The little bitty uh coffin sleeper. <laughs> There's the bed right there, Bella. <laughs> but I'm in the little coffin sleeper, uh 
at the end of that last video I posted, I told y'all about that windshield getting the back window getting busted. And uh, that following Monday, I got the def trailer. Uh, before I got the def trailer, I had to go run and get that glass replaced in the back window. And um, I got the def trailer. Went and run me a load of def on Monday and Tuesday. Come back to the yard Tuesday to uh, drop the def trailer off and pick my trailer up. And yeah, them brand new fenders done broke again. So, <laughs> uh, we got a little heated, heated over that right there, about them fenders. And, uh, while I left Rusty at the yard to get the fenders fixed again, uh, I told them, I asked them if they can go ahead and I had some rear ends. My rear ends was leaking on, on one of the drives. So they said they was going to fix that fender, take the rear ends apart. Uh, it was like the big you know uh the cover that goes over the seal the uh the chunk it's like the seal of that was leaking so excuse me so uh they had to reseal the rear ends and while they was doing that they went ahead and took the suspension out from underneath it changed all the bushings changed all the shocks changed all the torsion bars uh all that stuff so uh, boss man told me the other day that it should be, should be finished tomorrow. So hopefully so. I won't be back home till Saturday, but hopefully Saturday I can go swap out trucks. From Newark, Ohio. How's it going, Eddie's Trucking Adventures? Mike Cook. I'm going for an MRI scan. I'm scared, excited, nervous, and stressed. Need it, need it for my head. Oh, man. Columbus, Ohio. What's going on, Mr. Ron Thompson? I'm just literally right outside, right outside of you, right here in uh, Groveport. I'm going to be unloading here in Groveport in the morning. Uh, yeah, Mr. Eddie, praying for you there, buddy. For some of y'all who was wondering who that person was on the last video at the very end of it, if you watched it all the way through and it got down there to, uh, you know, the cancer sucks type deal, my uncle uh, passed away last Wednesday uh, after a five and a half years, almost a six year battle with cancer, colon cancer. It finally took his life on last Wednesday. That was a pretty sad day for all of us. Uh, that's why I don't hurt so much. Yeah, that's a that's a rough thing right there. But we had uh, I ain't been making a lot of videos because I've been off a lot. I was off last Friday. I was off. Uh, what's going on, Mister James from Connecticut? Um, I was off last Friday. Monday and Tuesday, we, uh, his funeral was supposed to be Monday, but he got changed to Tuesday because, I'm sorry, y'all, I, uh, accidentally hit the wrong button, uh, what's going on, Terry, but, uh, we were supposed to have his funeral on Monday, and, uh, it got pushed back to Tuesday because Monday the, uh, funeral home was too, too overbooked, so, we ended up having his funeral on Tuesday. Oh, man, Kevin, yeah. Paul, Kentucky. Where you at in Kentucky? You ain't going to the truck show up there in Louisville? I passed by over earlier today, man. There's been a lot of gorgeous trucks on the road today. Thank you, Richard Bennett. Let's say John Letterman, or Jay Letterman. I don't know if your name's John or not. Drexel, North Carolina. I appreciate it, buddy. That's part of life, I reckon. There ain't for one thing certain in life, and that's death. Right there. You might go this way. I wish I'd known you was in town stakes on me, huh? 
Hey, I'm in town right now. I am from East Kentucky. I might go this weekend. Man, I wanted to stop by there tomorrow on the way back just to go check it all out, but uh, I don't like doing things by myself. If I, if I do something like that, man, I want to go with my family. I was telling my brother on the phone earlier, man, we need to make a, next year, we need to make a full week, a full week off, come up through Kentucky, go to that little dinosaur world thing up there, and go to go to that Corvette Museum, and go to Kentucky Down Under and all that stuff, and just make our way up to Louisville to go to the, uh, the truck show and stuff, that'd be pretty cool. Uh... I appreciate you, Eddie's Trucking Adventures. I'll be praying for you. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, I know that freeway. Grass is growing out now. It's about that time. I know it's about that time. Oh, my gosh. Four inches of snow. I tell you what, it's uh, it's 47 degrees right here where I'm at. Of course, I got the windows down, truck turned off. It feels absolutely fantastic. It's been a gorgeous, gorgeous day today. Not a cloud in sight. It just seems like the the truck was just running real smooth all day today. I'm headed to Matt's on Saturday, man. I'd love to go. I'd love to go. I, I remember one time. Uh, I brought a load up to Wisconsin, unloaded that on like a Friday, and I had to take a 34 on the road. And I got back down there to uh, uh, Joplin, Joplin, Missouri, uh, down there to uh, G-Bats. I forgot what year it was. It was it was after COVID, but uh, I took a 34 down there in Joplin, Missouri at the Big Petro, so I was able to go to that truck show. Cause I was right there at it. Uh, but that mats, I, I'd like to go to it, but I, I'd much rather have my family with me to go with me. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Bell. Bell. <laughs> what you doing? Huh? What's up? <laughs> uh, we got out there I don't know if y'all can see it or not see that field right there we got out there when we first got here and we went out in them woods right there and found us a big old stick and uh found us a big old stick and we got out there and we played fetch and we played for about an hour when we first got here and uh I guess I wore her out It's too quiet at home without her there. Hey, Bella, Ron, Ron said hello. He's waving a hand at you, Bella. Hey, uh, Mr. John, I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, been to Mr. Frank Walthall in Macon. I used to go there years ago. I'm a, years and all those videos, and Bella, good to see you again. Uh, you're at freight sales? No, I'm over here at, uh, uh, Petro Choice. Petro Choice. <laughs> yeah, I'm over here at Petro Choice, over here in, uh, Groveport. Groveport. Groveport, Ohio. Man, I ain't got my truck. I'm not in my truck. I ain't got nothing of mine. All I got... It is pretty much Bella. <laughs> I got Bella and I got my bag and I got a sleeping bag. I ain't got the grill on me, man. I don't have it on me. It's all in my truck at the yard. Uh, David Smith, Mr. Frank over at Walthall. No, usually we tell, we deal with uh, uh, Rodney. Rodney unloads us with that bulk oil and stuff. We don't ever really see Mr. Frank. I was at Matt's years ago, and the place was just packed, jam-packed. I bet it was. With all the pictures I've done seen floating around on Instagram, 
there's a lot of stuff going on over there. Uh, pretty good away from home. It ain't too bad. And Kenley 95. That hey, Kenley 95 Petro, is that on the, uh, that's on Interstate 95 over there? I gotta get some more made, man. I got, uh, I gotta think, I think I got one more in the, uh, in the, um, closet. Yeah, at XL 106. I thought so. Uh, I think I got one more in the closet, but uh, it, the the post on the uh, thing ain't there anymore. I gotta get some more made. I gotta get some different colors and stuff made. At the one hundred six, okay. But anyways, yeah, the old uh, Instagram man's been, you don't have your, <laughs> yeah, very expensive trip, very expensive, uh, but the Instagram thing, man, they've been blowing it up with pictures of that, of that mats going on over there, and they got some, I mean, a lot of the times you see these truck shows and stuff like that, they pretty much the same trucks go to all these shows and stuff like that. But every once in a while, people start building the new trucks and like uh semi casual did them, uh, them new 589s just across the road, Mr. Ron, just across the road. Uh, semi casual did them, uh, them two 589s. They got that flat top one. And then they took that stand-up one they got and ch chopped the top on it and put that regular sleeper like like his own Rusty on that thing. And man, them trucks turned out fine. Fine, fine. I was supposed to be hit in Arizona for two stops, but them boys at the way station put me out of service up there on their five-headed south in Iowa. That ain't good. She yesterday after I got loaded, I started pounding the ground all the way over, over here. Um, I got, I was going to stop south of Nashville yesterday and do my 10 there. But then I was like, you know what? We need to get on through Crashville, like everybody calls it, tonight. Get on the north side there. What's up, Mr. David? Oh, yeah, the 589 will take me a, a while to get used to that. Now, the way the outside of the ones that the semi-casual done, they look good. The inside still looks like crap. You ain't changing that. Uh, that just looks like crap. Uh, the purple and orange one, uh, I guess I ain't seen that one yet. Oh, that you talk about that uh, the 389 that, that uh, semi-casual just got done doing? Uh, anyways, so I stopped there at White House, uh, Tennessee, yesterday evening at the, uh, yeah, digital get, dash is garbage. Yeah, 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 I know which one you're talking about, dude. That purple and orange one? Yeah, that's like it looks good. But, uh, I stopped there at White House, Tennessee last night at the Loves. You ain't getting no parking spot there at no 11 o'clock at night. Uh... Yeah, the flat top one was the orange one. I mean, honestly, the, the flat top and that stand-up they did looks really good. But once you open the door and look on the inside of it, that just <laughs> that just throws it all off. That ain't that ain't no fun. <laughs> uh, 
Everybody's got their mixed feelings about the new 589s. The outside of them looks nice if you fix it up. But the inside, man, just go on with something else. Just go buy you something else. Then I heard they're supposed to be getting rid of Kimworths. Or they're supposed to be getting rid of the W900 this year or next year or something like that. I don't know how true that is, but I heard that. So anyways, I got to White House last night. And uh, the parking lot was so full of trucks, I couldn't even get a spot. So I had to uh, go spend the night up there at the uh, the big old chicken coop. Coming in to... Uh, All right, Mr. Ron, I appreciate you. Gentry and Sons about the blue people with the camera doors on, on the slipper. Yeah, I've seen that too. I've seen that too, Mr. David. Mr. Ron, be careful. Crap. Y'all see what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing to hold my phone. So, yeah, I had to go spend the night at the chicken coop last night. And then woke up this morning, man, there was uh, state troopers every day going where the only good thing about staying out at one of them chicken coops right there is they don't, they don't normally bother you, but when you get up the next morning, you can leave, and when you come out of their parking right there, you don't have to cross over to still, you can just pass right beside it, and they can't, they can't do anything about that to you. They can't do anything to you about that. Unfortunately, that style of cab is going to take a long time to get used to. <laughs> I can completely agree with that. If you're going to have a long hood truck or something that's supposed to be a long hood truck, you need to have the, the, the smaller cab, the old school smaller cab. You ever get around with Tom um, made you for supper? All right. That show sure will work. Not the W900. I don't believe that. Law with Mikey about to cuss on this YouTube. I don't know. I don't know, Mr. John. I have no idea. He ain't said nothing to me about it. Uh, a friend of mine got his uh, shifter in the same time I did because we both ordered them at the same time. And, uh, He's got a flat top, and he got the, um, what was mine, a 48? He got the 42 inch, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. He got the 42 inch, and he's got that big old tall spike on it. So his, his sits about, I don't know, about six inches above the dash, and, uh, in this little flat top right here, mine would probably hit this light right there. I don't know if it would or not, but uh, I've gotten used to it, but I am going to take it out. I got a machine shop right down the road from the house. Uh, you got to have a you got to have a TIG welder to weld that stainless and stuff, and they got a machine shop right down the road from the house. I'm going to take it out one weekend. Bring it down there to them and get them to chop it down some because it is, it, it's way too tall. I do like it like that. It is tall. I like it like that, but it's getting where I'm stretching for it, trying to get in that right hole. And I just don't like that. It, it's, it's just too, it's too much. Everybody's been asking me about that shifter, about that shifter. You ever going to chop it down? I mean, it's too tall. It's time. Hey. I ordered the tallest one because that's what I thought I wanted. And uh, that's way too tall. Don't order a 48. A 40, 42 would be, a 42 would probably be right or maybe just a little bit taller than the dash right there. And then the next size down would be a 36, I believe. And that would probably be, be up in this area right here. But um, I am going to send it to that machine shop and get them to... Uh, to chop it down a little bit. But to answer that question, I don't know, Mr. John. He ain't said nothing to me. Ain't nobody said anything to me about it. Uh so I don't I don't I don't know. Bella, you want to get outside? 
Huh? Huh? Come on. Come on. Now hold on a second. Uh, Kevin, that's the same person, Kevin Will, the same person I'm talking about with the machine shop. I got to go talk to them about the uh, the hood ornament. Uh, the hood ornament, I want to get them to make for me. I'm going to tell you all in a minute what it is. Uh, Uh, Eco Cave 0222, like your videos, been watching for the last few weeks. Just finished my first week training at my new job. So glad I made the switch from dry van to fuel tanker. Can't wait to get carted. Oh man, you'll love it. I wish I'd have done fuel in a long time ago. I used to pull a, uh, uh, actually, I gotta give me a, I gotta give me a shirt on real fast, y'all long sleeve i used to pull a uh, low boy and flatbed and stuff like that and i enjoyed doing that because it was a lot of outside physical labor but there was a lot of sitting around waiting time and stuff like that with that as well and uh i just didn't like all that and man i wish i'd have started hauling fuel a long long time ago because uh there's not a lot there's not a lot oh crap sitting around waiting with fuel hauling and stuff and it's more of a fast paced type of type of ordeal i'm coming bella let's give daddy a second i gotta put my long sleeve on it's a little chilly willy out here oh i know y'all y'all getting thrown all over the damn place Uh, Rusty's at the shop. The, uh, I was telling at the very beginning, the, that fender right there on the driver's side, <laughs> done fell off again. Brand new fenders that we put on there. And, uh, the, if you remember that bolt right there for that back bracket right there, kept on breaking us through the frame. Well, it done broke again. And, uh, we had to, uh, the rear ends, up under there was leaking on rusty so we had to uh they had to take all that stuff apart reseal it all put it all back together all that stuff and they ended up going ahead and changing all the bushings and shocks and torsion bars all that stuff on the truck uh while it was down in the shop if you're not for sure of what i'm talking about this rear end chunk right here, <coughs> this seal around it right here was leaking on Rusty's, on both of them. So they went ahead and changed these torsion bars right here. And they went ahead and changed these bushings and stuff right here <coughs> for the suspension. So it wouldn't, so it'd be a little bit more smoother of a ride. Uh, that truck's a used truck, so it's not like it was a brand new truck. That truck's used, and he knew when he bought it, there was going to be a lot of stuff that he was going to have to uh, eventually start replacing on the truck. And, uh, well, when you drive a truck, you put a lot of miles on a truck in a year's time, It's it can get wore out pretty quickly. Um, I have an automatic restriction on my license. I got my CDLs through CR England. Definitely want to learn how to shift manually and get one of my dream trucks, W900 flat top, 389 Coronado. Uh, keep, uh, shifting ain't, shifting ain't hard at all. It is freezing cold out here, y'all. Shifting ain't hard at all. Once you learn how to do it, it's kind of like riding a bike. What in the world is going on here? It's kind of like riding a bike. Uh, W900, I'd love to have me a W9 studio sleeper. 
Y'all hold on a second. What are you doing, Bella? Oh, good grief. Where's that stick at? Look at that stick. Look at the stick. Look at the stick. Whoa, you hear that barrel? Huh? Get it. Oh, it's the phone. Come on. Look at the stick. Come on, come on, come on. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to get my daggum sleeve here. Fingers are getting cold. Look at the stick. <laughs> Good stick. Uh -oh. Here we are. Uh, Mike, when you do, you're 34. And I should be back out there in two or three months. You'd be out there to uh, hit to work. Remember, if the wheels ain't turning you. Or, I heard that. Uh... 34, I'll do at the house. That trailer right there, slap full of them barrels. And it's getting colder out here, so it's making them popping noises. Oh, Kevin Cummins, glad to see you doing good, missing the videos, man. I'm doing better than I deserve. Everybody is, man. There's just been a lot going on. Uh, it kind of got me out of the motivation. I mean, y'all keep me motivated to do this stuff but it's hard to <laughs> i'm just gonna shut up now i'm just gonna be quiet there's just a lot of stuff you know that goes on uh there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of stuff that goes on in everybody everybody's normal life uh, Bella's looking at that bottle thing. Hey, where'd that, uh, where'd that stick go? Where'd that stick? But there's a lot of stuff that goes on in everybody's personal life that just, uh, not saying it messes with you, it does. It, oh, there it is. It's just, uh, like, like my uncle passing away and stuff like that, kind of added on to the mix. And then, like, I've, for the past month or so, we've been going to the doctors, eye doctors and stuff for my daughter and stuff because her eyesight's starting to get worse and worse and worse. And they they bring you to a, one specialist and this specialist says she might have this disease called retinous pigmentosa, which is usually only seen in males. And my cousin has the stuff and he's 34 just like I am and he's completely blind now. And, uh... I mean, he's literally blind, can't do nothing, 34 years old. Well, my daughter ain't but 14 years old. If she's got that stuff, which we don't even know yet, we, we, ain't even, we, don't, we don't even know yet exactly what is going on with her, uh, but if she does have it, she's 14 now. My cousin, when, he got, when, he, when they diagnosed him with it, he was in his mid-20s, early 20s, something like that. So just say 15 years and he's blind now so if my daughter's got it at 14 years old that means when she gets in her mid mid 20s late 30s she's going to be almost completely blind because that retina pimatosa stuff and uh so we, we went to another specialist and he don't he don't think it's that he thinks it's something else but he don't he can't fully say you know what the ordeal is so they had to do a gene test on her and basically they just swab your mouth and they send it off and somehow they can see your genes. Uh, and supposed to, uh, it, long, long story short, it's supposed to uh, tell exactly what it is. If it's the retina pigmentosa or some other kind of disease things that he, he talked about. <laughs> And uh, so you got all that stuff that plays in on your on your mind and all that stuff, you know, uh, along with trying to make the videos and all that stuff. And it just, 
I kind of got out of the motivation to it uh, because I, I, you get so much more stuff on your brain. And I, there's a lot of truck drivers that watch this channel right here and ex truck drivers. And y'all know exactly what I say when, when you get behind the wheel of the truck, you just kind of want to be in that peace. You know, you want to be in that quietness so you can think and just, and you just don't want anything else to do. So think, you know, but there's a, there's a lot more stuff that, that I can't talk about because uh, company-wise stuff. But anyways, that's why i kind of been unmotivated to make videos. I got another video to post right now. I just ain't posted it yet. And uh, like the other day, I sat there for... I probably sat there for five hours editing, editing on this video that was almost five hours long when I started with it. And I got it down to 55 minutes and didn't even finish the video. So... But there is a lot of stuff that I want to get back into recording and stuff like that. Like, like a lot of people talked about uh, me making a cooking, little cooking thing, you know. Well, my stepdad went out and uh, bought me a Traeger a couple weeks ago, and I've been cooking every freaking day on that thing. It's a wood pellet, the pellet grill. And they, <laughs> if you don't have a pellet grill, you're missing out. That's a that's a good uh, that's a good investment for a barbecue pit right there. Them things are awesome. Uh, so I told my wife that I wanted to start making cooking videos and stuff, showing how we do different things that we cook on the Traeger and stuff. You know, meat wise of the carnivore diet thing. Uh, Freeway, no, this Pete does not have a Detroit. It's got a 565 Cummins in it. Uh, you caught the devil with those fenders. <laughs> man, I ain't, you ain't lying there, David Smith. Them daggum fenders, man. I told the boss man the other day, just take them off. Uh, I told him just take them off the other day and put them quarter fenders back on there. We still got them quarter fenders that was on the truck when we first got it. I told him just take them daggum half fenders off, put the quarter fenders back. I didn't have no problem with them. From Akron, Ohio. What's going on, uh, Scotty? What's going on, Mr. Scotty? Bella B, the new camera dog. Hey, I got some stuff. I got I got some uh, stuff in my truck. Uh, when I bought them cameras, I got these uh, little different mount setup things, like three boxes of them, so I can have all these different mounts. And one of the mounts is Velcro, and uh, I'm going to eventually put her... Uh, I'm gonna eventually put her harness on her and just sit the camera on top of her and let her let her let her have a camera shot. Uh is she protective? Uh friendly chemist. Uh feed her, she'll be nice to you. <laughs> That's all I can really say is feed her and she'll be nice to you. But uh usually when it comes around uh, other people and stuff getting around a truck or coming around me, she kinda she kind of wants to uh, let her presence be known, but majority of the time you feed her or you give something to her or you take that stick and throw that stick or whatever, she'll be your best friend. Thank you, Scotty. Oh, that's a good truck. Uh, that's a good truck. What are you talking about, Mike, about that W9? I want the flat top with a Detroit shape on I hope people Aaron, hope people aren't trying to discourage you. No, no, Nancy, no, no, no. I ain't, I, I don't really have a, a, well, the haters that's on this channel right here, the good thing about YouTube is all I got to do is block them from the channel. So they, they can watch the video, but they can't comment no more. So that's just as easy as it's going to be. You want to be an idiot? You want to start being a hater and stuff like that? You'll just simply get blocked and I ain't got to see you no more. Uh, but I did have one person that I blocked. I'm going to go ahead and say this too while I'm at it. If you're going to email the company, if you're going to email the company I work for, <laughs> and y'all think I'm lying when I say this, but if y'all are going to email the company I work for and start filling their head with a bunch of lies and stuff like that, man, at least tell the truth, you know? If it's going to be y'all emailing the company over something I'm doing, 
make sure y'all know what the heck y'all are talking about first before you email it because this simple person right here, uh, what was his name? Oh crap, what was his name? See, that's how much he meant to me. I don't even I don't even remember his name. But anyways, I know where he was from. He was from around Little Rock, Pine Bluff, Arkansas area. I know what his email is. I know what his telephone number is because when you email, when you email the company, you got to put your email in, you got to put your telephone number, your name, the reason why you're emailing and all this stuff. I don't know if my boss man and them contacted him or not, but uh, I think I just remembered his name. <laughs> but anyways, this individual emails my company, tells my company, and this is why I made the comment on a couple of them videos about how I'm cooking on the side of the trailer with uh, a trailer load of gas. I mean, you got to be outright freaking stupid to think that I'm going to strike that flame up right beside a flammable trailer. I would never do that. That is stupid. That is absolutely retarded. But, uh, yeah. uh, he emailed him about how I'm always speeding and showing that I'm going 75 miles an hour down a highway in a big truck and I'm like, well, if the speed limit's 80 miles an hour, you think I'm going to do 65? I don't think so. I'm going to do freaking 80 miles an hour, you know. That's what the speed limit is. Truck can do it. Might as well let her eat, you know. <laughs> but anyways, he sent that to him, and he told him how I don't wear my seatbelt and stuff like that. Look, y'all, I don't wear a seatbelt. <laughs> and I'm not going to. <laughs> That's just me. That's my personal conviction, you know. I've known plenty plenty of people who's gotten killed in one of them big trucks right there simply because they got into an accident and they couldn't get the seat belt off and burned up alive or something like that i don't wear my seat belt in the big truck in my personal vehicle at home i wear my seat belt i just i never have ever worn a seat belt in a big truck i ain't going to um what else did he talk about seat belt cooking on the side of the trailer without with with a full load of gasoline i've never done that uh speed oh and holding the camera going down the road like like he acts like i hold the camera and just go down the road like that i got mounts i got a chest mount i got a head mount i got a i got all kind of mounts like the outside shots of the truck i just got a it's a like a vice grip thing that you put out there on the mirror and it you get your different shots you know and uh, now, before my boss, man, I don't know if he called him back or not, but before he did, he called me and he's like, well, it's all this right here. And he sent me the email. I was like, man, I, that's just a hater, you know, just a hater. I said, I told you when I started the channel and when I started getting more popular in the channel, I told you this was going to happen. And uh, he's like, well, I said, How? I said, uh, I said, you think I'm really going to go and, uh, cook on the side of the trailer with my with my placards on, you know, flammables and stuff, and uh, cook on the side of the trailer like that. I mean, I do have a family. I, I would like to go back to the house, you know. And he's like, I didn't think he was that stupid. I was like, yeah, don't don't believe all this stupid crap that people want to say. Bella, we got to get you back in the truck, baby. It's a little cold out here. Oh, man, I'm sorry for moving y'all around so damn much. But, yeah, uh, if you're going to email the company, <laughs> Just make sure you know what you're talking about first. I mean, it don't make no daggum sense. To, to It don't make no sense for somebody to hate on somebody else who's out here doing his job. Don't ever freaking daggum have a problem. It don't, make, it don't make no sense at all for somebody else to just ruin somebody else's life over some lying BS. You know what I mean? Y'all give me a second. Let me get back in this truck. Come on, brother. Come on, baby. Set them up right here. Come on. Oh, good grief. Oh, stand up. I'm drop y'all again. Alrighty. Now we're going to roll the windows up. It is getting colder. It's down to 39 degrees now. Oh, dang it, done got dark. Up in here. Let's see here if I can set y'all up some other way uh, i'll just hold y'all let's see here uh, work stuff 
It is what it is. Some some people just don't like the fact that some people just don't like the fact that I got a YouTube and they don't. I guess they don't like the camera. So I guess I call them in a bad day. Uh, it rained here in San Antonio, but we're expecting some severe thunderstorms later tonight. Yeah, they're supposed to be uh supposed to be uh thunderstorming and raining and stuff on me tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Mr. David. Like I said, it'll be four months from now before I know anything, before we know anything about what the test shows for for her and stuff. But I know right now she's got to wear, like, the sun blinds her, and she's got to wear, like, her sunshades indoors and stuff because the light and everything blinds her and stuff. I don't know. My wife's on here. She should be on here, so she should know what... Uh, she should know she's love. If you still on here, just pop it up in the comments there. What the crap it is called. It's some kind of, I don't know what it is. I don't even want to lie about it. Keep true to yourself. Family. We're, hey man, Mr. Gregory. I appreciate you, man. Hey, Mr. Ryan, where are you at today? My, both of my retina detached. The Lord above, we all they were able to fix one. Oh man, that's crazy! Yeah, my cousin, he's completely, completely blind. The other day, he was at my uncle's funeral, and he, it's it was it's funny because you're literally standing right there, but he can't see you, and he's asking who it is. Uh, I tell you one thing, though, I, uh, I seen in him at the funeral was that. All of his other senses, like his sense of touch, sense of hearing, and his sense of smell and stuff, all that stuff starts working right when you ain't got your vision. <laughs> that ain't no lie, Mr. David. My mind's constantly, constantly just... My mind would be off in La La Land like riding down the road because you think about so much stuff. You putting a drop visor on a W900? Oh, okay, go ahead. What size is it, Mr. Ron? Who's that, Mr. Kevin? He said another trucking channel, but he hardly ever posts. Who, who are you talking about? Lebanon, Tennessee. I appreciate it, Jason. From Mount Corey, Ohio. Where's that at, Mr. John? Oh, thank you, Mr. David Smith. I appreciate you. Be careful. What's going on, Mr. Brandon Giller? Yeah, there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there. There ain't no doubt. <laughs> that is absolutely correct there, Miss Nancy. People sometimes just can't stand that someone else is happy and having a good time at what they do. That is absolutely correct. They want to they try to just ruin everybody else's life. There are too many, too many haters out there. Well, I'll say they are jealous and they can't do nothing. That's all it is, too, y'all. The, the, the haters are just miserable in life, and they try to make everybody else miserable along with them. And that's why I said, whenever I see it come across the channel, I just, um, uh, you can watch, but you ain't going to comment no more. <laughs> Terry Martin, hello from Oklahoma. What's going on? What part of Oklahoma? Carol Will? <laughs> yeah. Hard to believe how people act. The world keeps getting crazier. And it's going to keep getting crazier and crazier and crazier until the Lord comes back. What's going on, Nathan Breenig? Nathan Breenig? What's up, Benjamin?
Mr. Ken, hey, Mr. Ken, you're the one. Y'all, yeah, you and your wife is the one who sent me that picture. How's it going, buddy? I appreciate you, Jason Witherspoon. I'm trying to, as long as he stays at the shop. I, I was thinking earlier, riding down the road, that when I get him back out the shop, uh, oh, Alex Trucking Guy, yeah. I was thinking earlier, when I get him back out of the shop, I need to do a really good deep cleaning on the inside, and <clears throat> I need to get my polishing stuff back out because it's starting to get that, starting to get that type of, or uh, starting to get that time of the year to start getting it dolled back up, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Alex, the trucking guy. Yeah, he, uh, I seen some of his videos the other day. Hopefully I'll stay there. I seen some of his videos the other day where it was like, he wasn't, like he is, he must have been on vacation or something. Because he was posting videos, like reposting videos he had already posted at one time. That's good water right there. Thank you, Raymond. I appreciate you, Kevin Cummins. Ah, I'm telling y'all, I ain't got no, I ain't got no bearings. This thing right here from Toronto, Andrew. What's going on? Huh. Joe Morrow. Hey, brother, I know what you mean. My mind goes sometimes. My mind goes sometimes, and I can't sleep at night, man. I'm not in my truck, y'all. I'm in the little, I'm in the little, the little coffin sleeper, all right? So last night was the first night back in the truck in six days, and I had to sleep in this little thing last night. I didn't get to bed last night until about midnight, I guess. I woke right back up at 6 o'clock this morning, wide wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and uh i didn't sleep worth the flip in my mind <clears throat> carol will hallelujah i mean hey doug i'm over here and um y'all gonna make me say this again ain't you groveport i'm in groveport just right outside of columbus Uh, the northeastern corner of Ohio, uh, Oklahoma. There you go. My wife just says, retinous pigmentosis or ocular albinism. She has no pigment in her retinas, so she has to wear shades. So that's that's what's going on there. It's either the retinous pigmentosa, which is very common in in teenage boys, not girls. It's more common in boys, not girls. She either has that or she has that ocular albinism, which is basically where she ain't got no, she ain't got no pigment in her retina. Uh, the guy said that if it is retinous pigmentosa, she would have a lot of pigment or something, or she'd be over pigmentized in her retina. But he said that when we went and to the, the, the retina specialist. He said that he don't think it's retinous pigmentosa. He thinks it's the ocular albinism because she has uh, like no pigment in that retina. So that's why he thinks it's the ocular albinism, but he don't know for sure. That's why they had to do the little gene test and send it off and get the, uh, they'll, they'll know the answer to that in about four months. Good to see you too, Big Mike. I got a friend of mine. I got a friend of mine, Big Mike Hall's cattle. He uh, he pulls for a guy out of uh, out of South Dakota, and I was talking with him the other day. I was talking with him the other day, asking him, uh, told him that that you haul cattle as well, and he asked uh, where you was from. I, I didn't really, I didn't really know where you was from. Where where you haul cattle around, Big Mike? 10 inch drop. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Got it back from Phoenix Wednesday a.m. off Thursday, Friday. 
We'll leave Friday evening, Saturday in, waiting on the shipper and his destination. I heard that. That's going to look good. 10, 10 inch drop. Oh, okay, I got you, Mr. John. What you say, buddy? Tall trucker? Avin R, what's your thoughts on becoming an owner-operator in the tanker industry? <laughs> Ask my wife. She's in the chat. I tell her every single day, I want my own truck. I want my own truck. I want my own truck. I just, I don't, I don't have the finances to buy one right now. I just don't. Uh, but I'd love to have my own truck. I mean, if it ain't, if it ain't pulling tanker, doing something else, I'd, I'd love to, to pull a reefer unit just because I've always wanted to do it. And, uh, I, I don't know. I just, it's, it's nice when you see them big old, nice lit up reefer units going down the highway in the middle of the night. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just. I want my own truck so bad right now, it's eating me alive. But I just, I, I, I ain't get the finances for it. I'll tell you what. I hit that big old Mega Millions or whatever that Powerball thing is or whatever all that stuff is. I'd show sure have the finances to get me one in. <laughs> Mr. Ken says he's doing good. Hoping to, hope you're enjoying the picture. I love that picture, man. <laughs> That's the coolest picture. I've ever had in my life. And back to Carolinas for Easter. Hope you and your family have a blessed Easter. I hope y'all have a blessed one too, Mr. Ken. I love that picture, by the way, man. I'm so thankful for that. It sits right beside my computer there. Ray Riley, I appreciate you from Jamaica. I appreciate your words, man. I can't, I, I can't really take credit for all that. Boogie's Corner, hey, bud. Be safe out there. Keep the rubber side down. Block out the haters. Man, I do. I'm loving the tanker industry. Being an owner-op would be the cherry on the top. I heard that. I would love to be able to... I don't need nothing fancy. Just something to get me started and be able to... Oh, man. <sighs> That's my dream. All you ones that have dreams and stuff like that, and you want to do this and you want to do that, don't ever give up on your dreams. No matter how bad somebody tries to take that dream away from you, don't give up on it. I would love to be able to have my own truck and do my own thing. Everybody, every, every company owner started somewhere. You know what I mean? I was going to talk about something tonight, but I forgot. forgot. I know in the next video, I don't know when I'm going to post it, but I'm doing deaf. It's just a deaf run. And, um, I said something at the very beginning of that video. It was like I had something I needed to talk about. I was pretty excited about. It. I never did even talking about it. <laughs> but uh, the other day, uh, the other day, the other day we got that motorcycle of mine paid off. If you ain't been around the channel for a while, I ain't had the motorcycle out in a while. But uh, the uh, that 2018 street light of mine, me and my wife paid it off the other day. And uh, so that thing is ours now. Ain't nobody owns that except us. And I was telling her the other day that we needed to start getting getting out on the bike and getting some good riding footage and stuff like that to post. But that, that baby doll is ours now. Ain't nobody owns that thing that titles in our name and I thought I, I found that to be a big accomplishment for me because that's the first thing I ever financed and and uh, actually own now is that bike. 
Do you have any plans to venture out in other areas of Tanker? Nah, uh, not really. Uh, bulk side of things, I would like to try the bulk stuff one time. You know, like, I got a, a friend of mine, uh, Scruffy Transportation on here. He's a, he's a subscriber. But uh, he works for Oakley. And uh, I always thought about getting my own truck and possibly going and putting it over there at Oakley uh, on the draw bulk side of things because that's what he does. Uh, I thought that'd be pretty cool, but. I watch your videos all the time. I, just, I keep trying to get a nice picture of Rusty just before it gets dark to send you another one. My wife loves to make him. <laughs> I'll get you one when I get him back and everything and get him all cleaned up real good. I'll get one for you. Uh, I'll send it to the email, to your email. I still got your email, Mr. Ken. But now I thought about getting into that bulk stuff at one time. Uh, matter of fact, before I actually started working over here, I uh, I was going to go to orientation. Uh, I was going to go to orientation at, oh, man, uh, a custom. A custom uh, uh, commodities, custom commodities. I was going to go for orientation for them to pull a dry bulk with them on that food grade stuff, salt, whatever the, the whatever they haul. And uh, at the time, it just didn't really make any sense because I don't think they was making, making good money. Uh, where I'm from, we have to import deaf. It's not, it's not at the gas stations. Uh, we, we get them from, uh, we, we pick up deaf from CF Industries in Yazoo City, Mississippi. They got a place down in Donaldsonville, Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Uh, I've never been to that one. It's a CF Industries too. Uh, then there's a place over in Baytown, Texas. They get it off of rail cars. I've never been to that one. I've always just went to Yazoo City, Mississippi and got mine. But uh, we go load it. We got a we got an old trailer. I I explained it a little bit on the video. <clears throat> but we got a, we got a trailer that we converted from a a oil trailer. It was a crude oil. Excuse me. It was a crude oil trailer, and uh, they they took it somewhere and got it <clears throat> got it spray spray lined with some liner stuff for that diff. And uh, got all the piping up underneath it all changed to stainless steel. And they put a little plastic pump on it and hose reel and all that stuff. That way, we, we bring depth to all the little southern loggers. So, where y'all see me haul diesel to, the southern loggers locations, they got depth takes on them. You get out of the truck, 10 minutes later, you're back in the truck going to the next one. It's just hook up, pump off however many gallons they wanted, and keep on riding. <clears throat> You can get a truck, uh, and as long as you make videos with it, you can ride it off. Oh, they do everything, Thomas Bowman. They do ammonia. They do DEF. They do uh, peroxide. They do all kind of stuff at those places. You ride as long as you make YouTube videos with it. You can ride it off on your on your taxes. That's what the trucking YouTube channel will do. So you're you're telling me stuff that I, I this is something I didn't know. So you're saying as long as I if I get a truck and I make videos, I can write it off as my YouTube tax and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't know all that. I don't I don't know the first thing about buying buying a truck. In my eyes, buying a truck would be just like if I went out and bought my motorcycle or if I went out and bought a regular vehicle. I'd just go in there and say, that's what I want, and finance it. I mean, that's that's how I got my motorcycle. That's how I got the wife's car. Uh, I don't know the first thing about none of that stuff. 
Uh, Thomas Bowman. You're calling my name. You did it well. Thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I don't. I don't know the first thing about doing any of that stuff. So I'm not a. I'm not a. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a businessman. I'm not a. I'm not a very. I'm going to say it like it, like it is. I'm not very intelligent when it comes to that type of stuff. Now, this truck right here, driving a truck, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty intelligent in that. But when it comes to all that finance stuff and doing this, doing that, and I don't know any of that stuff. Uh, do a business expense for your YouTube channel. Okay, like how? I mean, I, I do a business expense for YouTube channel. I don't, I don't understand that. I called a guy the other day. Everybody needs to, Thomas. Everybody. I mean, it's kind of like that. You know, how how are you going to know until you until you do it for yourself? Talk to an accountant; they can help you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, it's one of them things where how are you going to know for yourself until you try? Okay, it's basically like my diet, this carnivore diet stuff. All right, it's basically like that. People think I'm crazy. But they don't know. They don't know. Uh, all right, Mister Kevin, I appreciate you, buddy. See you later. Uh, people don't fully know what I'm talking about with the carnivore diet and stuff because they don't do it for themselves. But if they was to try it out and give it a month or two, uh, then they would see where I'm coming from, you know. So that that's just the same thing. Uh, that's just the same thing with, with getting your own truck, you know, I'm never going, you may say you failed at it. Next person may say they're good at it. The next person may say it's tough. The next person may say it's very easy. I got my brother, my younger brother has a friend of his that went and bought an old junkie international and ran it for several years, pulling off the load board. And now he's got him a newer international. It's not brand new, but it's newer. And he's still pulling off the load board. And he's loving it. He's enjoying it. He's making good money. He's doing, he's making money for what he needs to make it for. You know, but the next person may say that, oh, well, the loads are crappy and everything's garbage right now. I mean, yeah, the rates are bad right now, but you can still make a, make a living off of it. You're not going to make a killing off of it, but you can still make a living off of it. But how, how can I ever do anything if I just listen to what these people say, you know, I, I, it's, it's one of the things, you know, I'm not going to know until I try it, you know. Oh, man, I know. <laughs> Raymond, I know. I know. I told my wife, we got to get it out the shed. We got to get it out the shed. Uh, they say you show the videos to you. Oh, uh, Okay. Uh, Brandon, Jacob Lever doing great, man. Uh, Raymond, yeah, I know, man. I need to, I need to get it out of the shed. I do know one thing about that bike. Uh, we're going back on the bike here, y'all. Uh, with it being sitting up underneath my little carport deal, the moisture, uh, the handlebars, all that stuff's primer. You know, not primer, uh, uh powder coated all that stuff excuse me all that stuff is powder coated so uh right around where my throttle and stuff is it's starting to rust the handlebars are starting to rust from the primer coat chipping and then the then the rust starting right there so i told my wife we do need to order some more handlebars for it uh i could just take mine off and go get them re-primer coated but i want to get me some of the uh they call them meat hooks anybody know what that is meat hook but anyways, I want to get the meat hooks put there, same size, same tallness, get the meat hooks, but I want them to be the shiny black to match the dash. 
instead of that dull powder coated black. So, uh, so I told her the other day we got to get that thing out of the shed and get it get it ready to go, get it ready to start riding again. Oh, the ninety nine hundred I, the IX Eagle. The, my dad drove one. I love that truck. That was nice on the inside, big and roomy. Uh, the one he drove had a, I don't remember exactly what horsepower that Caterpillar was, but it was, it was a good truck. Double bunk, everything. Me and my little brother used to ride with daddy during the summertime when he had that thing. The, Nancy, the person's attitude will affect their own. Absolutely. That's exact. Absolutely correct. All right, San, San, Santiago Morales. How's it going, Mike? I have a question. The truck you're driving is a 389 or 379. Did it come with that front windshield? The truck I'm driving is a 2015 389. Uh, it, it's called a... Uh, A symbol title truck. It's a it's a 2015 cab, but on paper it's a 2022 truck. It's just a title assembled. It's not they don't make gliders anymore, but they take rebuild the motors, rebuild the transmissions, or take motors out of this, put in this, put motors in this, put in that. You know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a 2015 cab. Now. The front windshield, that's the first Peterbilt 389 I've ever seen with a front one-piece windshield. Uh, I'm guessing the people who ordered the truck bought it brand new. I'm guessing that's how they ordered it. Uh, the cab is actually made rounded. Uh, let me see here if I can show you all on this truck here. Let me see. Let me see if I can... Spin this thing around. Uh, flashlight. Uh, well, I can't do a flashlight here. Nope. Can't do a flashlight. Let's see here, y'all. No, nah, y'all ain't gonna be able to see. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna be able to see. Anyways, the front, the, uh, Right here where this windshield is, the, 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 the dash goes to a point right there. On the front side of the dash here, it actually goes to a point and it's shaped like the windshield. Well, on Rusty, the dash is curved like that. So that it, the cab was actually made for that windshield. So I don't know. Uh, they, they must have ordered that truck like that from the factory. I don't know. Uh, that's just how it was when we bought it. I had somebody, uh, I'm going to say three weeks ago, I was down there in uh, Irvington, Alabama at the Loves. Went in, got me a shower, come back out. And as I was walking to the truck, the people was walking toward me. And I'm guessing him and his wife seen me get out of the truck to go get a shower. And they stopped me and was like, Man, is that one of them new 589s? I'm like, no, no, that ain't that ain't one of them trucks. Or he's like, well, what kind of truck is that? Because I ain't never seen no front piece windshield on no 389 or 379 or anything. And I was like, well, you have now. It's, it's a 389. It's a 389, 2015 389 with a front piece windshield. Now, the grill and all that stuff, I, we sent the truck down to New Gen uh, down there in Port Allen, Louisiana, and we got the old 379 front end put on it with the 359 headlights. We did all that stuff. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's, that's just how it come. Uh, Mr. Thomas says lots of money and support from family is needed if you go on her. That is exactly right. From Eaton, Ohio, Mr. Barry, what's going on? Payers put me to 40 years of owner operator ball.
payers. What do you, uh, Mr. John? And a new seat. Yeah, see the wife. Uh, the wife. The wife wants her a new seat on the back of it. My idea for the bike now. My idea for the bike is, being as I got it paid off now, all you all you bikers out here. What's going on, Mister uh, Uncle John? So for all you bikers out here, and ones that own bikes and stuff, quit pushing the lock button. Um, my idea with that bike is, is I want to get, I don't want to get that, I want to make it like a bagger bike, you know, but not with all that big old wheel on the front and all that stuff. I want to get the wide tire kit put on the front to where the tire is wider, like the back wheel, they, they both match. That's what I want to do because I think they just look freaking awesome. But I want to get the wide tire kit put on the front. I want to change the handlebars to the meat hooks. And then I want to take and put a center kickstand on it and an air ride suspension on the back. That way, when you go to get off of it, you know, you just dump the air and your kickstand goes down, your center kickstand. And then just lets the air out and just sits down level, you know, so it ain't leaning no more and stuff. I think that would be pretty freaking awesome. And then like the back of the bike, I would like to get the, the, you know how the Ultra Classics and stuff has got that big trunk back there? I don't want the big trunk. I want the slim trunk back there with a little bit of armrest that wraps around a little bit for the wife, you know. Uh, that's the kind of look I'm going for. I want to go for with it and uh it just takes time you know working with that stuff but that, that's the kind of look i'm going for I, I like i like them street glides and them road glides with that big old fat tire on the front to me it just looks mean you know looks looks mean a lot of y'all probably really really don't care about a bike <laughs> but man that's uh that motorcycle that's a fun thing to ride around on and my wife, that's all she talks about is that seat. She wants a seat. Because that seat hurts her butt. My dad had a few, including that one that is my profile picture. Those trucks started my love for trucks. Amen. What's going on, uh, Matthew? Hope I'm saying this right. Poirier from Quebec. Santiago. Uh-oh, what was we talking about, Santiago? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, AJ? Yeah, glad to see y'all too, man. I'm going to put a shift like you did, but I'm going to get the 36. I drive a 2019 3 Pete. Thanks for explaining everything. Yeah, don't get that 48. Um, I'm not saying I hate it. I love it. I mean, it's very comfortable. It's just I, you got to reach way up there for that right hole, and I just don't like that. Uh, like I said earlier, I was going to, I'm going to go to that machine shop and get them to chop it down a little bit. I appreciate it, Sant Santiago. Biggest thing in, I think the biggest thing in only your own truck, owning your own truck, other than having a customer base, whatever that might be, you have to know your cost per mile. What's up, Timmy? Legend makes a good air ride, and Advan Black sells a tour pack like you were talking about. Color matched. Okay. Advan. I'm going to have to look for that tonight online. Uh, Legend, I have been looking at their air ride stuff, and I have been looking at... I'm going to butcher their name. I don't. I can't remember what it is. R and R air rides or B and R or R and D air rides or something like that. It's a website. It's a custom bagger website. They got air rides too. I've been looking at their stuff too. Let's go fishing again. Uh, I need to, <laughs> man. Y'all don't. I wanted to go fishing this past weekend, and there was people posting pictures and everything of uh they was killing the white perch this past weekend on Celine and uh uh not Celine I'm saying yeah yeah Celine and Larto Lake they was killing the 
white perch this weekend. Cost per mile, that includes every fuel, everything, fuel insurance, if the registrations, everything that you have to spend on the road to get it down the road for one mile. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've, I've, I've looked at all that stuff. I've figured all that stuff up. Trust me, I've done a lot of thinking about that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I've done a lot of thinking about a lot of that stuff. Another thing is you got to be sure you want to get paid for your, you're going to get paid for your loads, whether you're a factor or not. Uh, Timmy G, no, nah, I'm all. I'm going to shoot back across there to Cincinnati and run back down there to Louisville, Louisville and come back down through Nashville and all that stuff. They're probably going to have me going towards Shreveport uh, to go get. I'm, I'll probably be able to make it back around Little Rock tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening. And then I'll leave Little Rock on uh, Saturday morning. And go toward uh, probably the Shreveport. Uh, probably go. They'll probably have me going back to Shreveport to pull pull a load to flush the trailer back out for next week out of Shreveport. Rojo, what's going on? Uh, I was just talking about Oakley just a while ago. Buying a truck, check in with Oakley. They have a YouTube channel. Well, what do they do? They got, what do they got? Like a, they got trucks that you can lease from them or something. I don't want to, I don't want to really do all that. I heard too many bad stories about leasing things. Bella. Yeah, right back there. Huh? And I've even thought about going that route, leasing something, you know, just doing some kind of lease or something like that. But I, I don't, I've heard too many horror stories about all that. You live just south of the Marion Scales there? Oh, okay. Marion Scales. Uh, I'm all I'm all messed up here, here Timmy G. Marion Scales, where's Marion at? I know it's Illinois, but where at? 57. 57 runs across through uh uh shoot man. Oh Marion, uh you talking about um uh, you talking about south of uh Effingham and all that? Of course, I'm on the phone, so I can't pull up my map and look. Ah! Keep on sliding y'all around. Sorry. Stop at Matt's in Kentucky on your way. I know it's not your kind of thing. You're a godly honest trucker. Stay safe. God bless. Man, look. Yeah, 46. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on, on operators. Yeah, I like I was saying earlier. I have a subscriber who actually has got his own truck and he's leased on over there, and uh, I've been talking to him a lot lately here about about how to get a truck and all that stuff. If you can't, if you can't get the money yourself, then you're just paying for someone else's truck. I know that. <laughs> I know. Uh, 
uh, Matt's thing. Yeah, I'd love to stop over at Matt's, Chris Trello. I'd love to stop over at Matt's, but I, I, this was one of the things where if I'm if I'm gonna enjoy it, I want to be able to enjoy it with my family, and I want them to be with me. You know what I mean? Plus, I mean, I see a, I see a lot of, uh, like they've been blowing Instagram up with the pictures and little videos and stuff like that from Matt's over there going on right now. It, that place has got a bunch, a bunch of trucks over there. See, when you go to Port Arthur sometimes, well, who you who you run for, Kyle? Kyle O'Quinn. I know some O'Quins up around where I live at. Who you run for, Quinn? Camilla Taint Lines? What trucks is that? Oh, uh, pneumatics. Oh, y'all must be running down there to, uh, uh, out of the, uh, out of Valero or something, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know, okay, I got you. I know what you, I know what you're talking about now. Uh, we got a Valero, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cody, I'm over here in uh, uh, every time, every time somebody asks me where I'm at over here, I can't remember it. Groveport, Groveport, over here outside of uh, Columbus. Oh crap! I gotta flip y'all around. Plug my phone up. Maybe I'll get my phone to sit up right here. Hold on, y'all. Biodiesel products? Okay. Okay, dude, I'll take like that. Okay. Oh, uh, Paperboy Trucker? Yeah, I've seen his channel before. He actually... I think he's the one. Uh, Scruffy Transportation said that he actually just does all the videoing. And then he gives the videos to his son or something like that. And he, uh, his son's the actual one that makes up all the videos and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, he pulls a dump. A dump trailer for them. Yeah, I see them blue and white Peterbilts all the time over there around uh, Port Arthur. Where y'all pull that stuff from? Oh, okay, that's cool. I'm headed to Michigan. I drive for FedEx. Oh, go ahead. From New Orleans. Wow. No. No, I'm not in Rusty Rojo. Yeah. The uh, Rusty had a... Uh, last week, I pulled a def load, and I come back from that def, and the fender 
defender on the driver's side, if you've been hanging around the channel for a little while, you know we've been having problems with them dead gun fenders. And uh, defender on the driver's side done broke again. So I got a little upset with it. Left it at the yard and told him to fix the crap. <laughs> and uh, while it was down, the uh, the rear ends was leaking on it. So they had to take the rear their back covers off the rear ends and reseal them. Used truck, y'all. It's a rusted truck. The underneath of that truck is absolutely horrible. Hence the name Rusty. Uh, it's 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 horrible. Uh, <clears throat> so the seals was bad on it. So they had to take the chunks apart, reseal them, put the covers back on them. And then I guess while they was doing that, they decided to go ahead and change all the bushings and shocks and torsion bars and all that stuff underneath it. Uh, so they, they done all that stuff. Uh, from what I heard, it wasn't at the yard today. So I imagine it was at the alignment shop getting realigned. So, yeah. I'm not in Rusty. I'm in the little, the little coffin sleeper truck of ours. Our little spare truck. It's not been enjoyable, that's for sure, but can't make no money sitting around a house. Uh, been looking for your truck, no luck so far, but you drive all through my area, Beaumont and Port Arthur. Oh yeah, I'm always, pretty much always down in that area. I heard that, Raymond. Uh, we come in at night to Port Arthur. Okay. But y'all do go to the big Valero plant right there, right? I think you said that. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize what all goes on. Uh, what all goes on to these, uh, like these plants and stuff like that, like what it all takes to, to make one of them plants run and make what you need out of it. You may be getting just oil or something out of it, but you don't realize how much stuff went into making that oil. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to. Thank you, Nancy. You have a good evening, too. All right, love. I'll call you in a little while. I won't be much longer. We'll probably hit that two-hour mark, and then I'll probably be shutting it off. Bill, what about you? What you think? Huh? What you thinking? Huh? It's getting colder and colder and colder out here. The other day we were sweating our tail off at the house. It's 36 degrees now. One company's waste product is another's invention. There ain't no doubt. The Diamond Green, oh, the, you talking about the place, uh, you turned down 7th Street right there, that, that new place they built right there? Man, that was horrible when they was building that place right there. When they was building that Diamond Green place or whatever, traffic was so daggum bad around there, I hate it going down there to Port Arthur. How's Bella doing? How you doing? Somebody wants to know how you doing. These lights, somebody put red lights all in this truck, so there's red lights back there in the sleeper too. But she's laying there. <laughs> she's doing all right. She hates this truck, just like I do. She does not have no room in this, this part. 
uh, this truck. It's part of Valero, and yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that was like a different, like, uh, I didn't know that was all part of Valero. I thought that was just something different. Um, get his son to edit and post, send him an email. He'll call back. I'm out, might be safe from my Bella Ribbon. All right, be careful. It's like Bella's doing Bella things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thomas Bowman, she's doing Bella things. Oh, okay, cool deal. Yeah, she's doing Bella things, man. The good thing about this little truck right here is, is like if I'm riding down the road, I just want to reach back there and, you know, pet her or something like that. All I got to do is just reach. <laughs> and she's just right there. <laughs> you can you can almost touch the back wall right there just by reaching back there and touching it. <laughs> so you mentioned flush diesel. I get that you put it in after the oil loads. To clean the tank or so, but who buys diesel with oil remnants? Trash companies to burn stuff? Incinerators? Well, I mean, if you look at diesel, that's all diesel is, is oil. <laughs> that's all diesel is, is oil. Diesel's trash. So, the diesel that you put in your truck at the truck stop, the diesel that you put in your tractor at home, the diesel that you put... Uh, in mud uh, to mix mix mud that's all it is is oil that's, that's what diesel is is oil that's why diesel when you take diesel and you pour it out you pour diesel in your hand you don't see no fumes or nothing come off of it because it's not diesel is flammable but it's not explosive diesel is a heating oil that's basically Basically, a diesel engine, I could be completely wrong on this, so if anybody else has a different answer on this, let me know. But a diesel engine, the way it works is it squirts diesel in the, mo in the, in the, in the motor there, and when it gets so hot, it itemizes itself from the mist. That's what actually causes the combustion, is that mist. But diesel fuel is just oil. <clears throat> Well, when we when we get finished unloading oil, and this is this is no, this is no, like no joke. All right. Tomorrow when I get finished unloading this oil right here, I can drive from here all the way back home, and I can get home, and I can almost promise you I ain't gonna get but about five gallons out of each compartment of what what ran down the walls and stuff, and come down to the to the uh, belly valve and all that stuff just going down the road, you know. Because, of course, oil is thicker, you know. But I can promise you five gallons or less is what I'll probably get out of the whole, you know, not the whole trailer, each compartment uh, of oil that ran down. And the majority of the time, it ain't even five gallons. Sometimes it can be three gallons, you know, whatever. But when you put, like, that number one hole on my trailer, that number one compartment is a 2,800-gallon compartment. If you got five gallons of oil in there and you're going to put 2,750 gallons of diesel, that's like nothing. That's, you, you, you can't even tell it's even there. Uh, John, 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 John. I didn't see what you put there, Mr. John. Oh, how far back are we going here? John, you meant prayers? Uh, I guess I didn't see the first one. But, uh, yeah, diesel, diesel is down. Now, we don't, whoop, back up, I thought I just seen it. We don't, uh, yeah, prayers put me, 
to 40 years of owner operator. Oh, 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 I got you. I got you. I got you now. I got you. All right, good night, Thomas Bowman. I got you, Mr. John. Yeah, diesel fuel is nothing but basically oil. Uh, now, gasoline and stuff, we will never, ever, ever put gas behind a load of oil. That's why we get diesel to flush the trailer out. The same thing when we're hauling gas and diesel, uh, gasoline and diesel and stuff, too. A lot of people say, well, you're contaminating the gasoline because you're putting it in a compartment that you had diesel in last. I mean, my gosh, man, you're putting a thousand gallons of gas in a compartment that's got a half a gallon of diesel in it. That's not going to hurt anything. <laughs> it's not. It's not going to hurt nothing. Um, but diesel, uh, see you later, Philip. Appreciate you joining in, bud. Oh, yeah, I've been having issues with that for a minute there, Raymond. And that could be what the idea is, too. Let's change the bushings and all that stuff. Because, I mean, if you don't live around Louisiana, you just don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I do know that Missouri has some pretty rough roads. Arkansas has some pretty rough roads. But Louisiana's got some pretty bad roads, man. And, uh, I mean... It could be because the bushes is bad and it's just so rough of a ride that the boats keep breaking. <laughs> with at least six months of experience. A good tanker company to start out with with at least six months of experience. Mr. Jonathan, I have all kind of people tell, ask me these questions. I don't know. I've never, I've never been with anybody else. Use, use number two diesel in place of oil for home heating. That, that's right. That's like, Kerosene, uh, kerosene and stuff. They'll take kerosene and mix with diesel for the winter time and stuff because the kerosene will keep the diesel from gelling up. And we'll, we'll do that sometimes. Um, we used to go to FedEx. I think it was FedEx or it could have been UPS up in Arkansas, up in, uh, Oh, man, up in, um, I can't even think now, up in Arkansas. We used to go up there to either a FedEx or it was a UPS or something, and we used to take and mix kerosene with diesel fuel because the kerosene would not allow the diesel fuel to gel up during the winter months. So we used to do that. Uh, but, Mr. Jonathan, I have so many people ask me that question, man, and I'm sorry. I just don't I don't know. I, I, I've never been with nobody else. This is the only tanker company I've ever worked for. And I've been over here for over nine years now. Uh, now, I did go to Andrews for about a month, a month and a half, a couple of years ago. And Andrews was a really good company. I really enjoyed it over there. The only real reason why I left Andrews was because I got tired of going 68 miles an hour and not being able to make up no time and not being able to make appointments. Uh, it just seemed like every day you was following more and more behind. Now, the trucks was good trucks. The, uh, the pay was really good. I think they paid 65 cents a mile, loaded and empty. If you hauled hazmat, it was uh, 67 cents a mile or something. 68 cents a mile, I can't remember. But there was weeks, there was a couple weeks over there where, where I pulled, shoot, almost $4,000 a week over there. And they kept me moving, they kept me rolling. I did enjoy the the work over there. It's just I didn't enjoy the I didn't enjoy the big company policy. I didn't enjoy that. Uh, I'm not a big company person, um, so I really I really can't help out. I mean, I'm not a very big company orientated person. I don't like all the rules and regulations and all that stuff. 
Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything bad about it. I mean, they got their own way of doing things. I mean, my boss man is starting to do all kind of different things to to his his company, and we got new cameras that they're starting to put in. Uh, no, no, we uh, we don't. We usually stay with our own trailers. We don't do all that trailer swapping stuff. Uh, but he's he's never had them on the trailer. He ain't never going to put them on the trailer. But uh, he's going to all these new camera systems, and uh, he's got cameras for the outside mirrors now. These big old round, big humongous cameras, man. It's so ugly looking. It's a waste of money in my eyes. But hey. This is his company. He can do what he wants to do. But uh, they're putting them out there on the mirror so they can look down the side of the truck. I, I don't see any point in it. But if the insurance says they'll give him more off on his insurance to put more cameras, he's going to do it. So it's whatever. Let's see here. But back on that subject, Andrews, they had cameras facing out the front, and that was it. Now, they did have all that. They did have all that radar stuff and all that beeping going off and all that big company stuff. You know, I'm pretty sure FedEx has got all that stuff, but we don't have none of that. You won't find none of that in your smaller companies, but them bigger companies, you will. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's coming to us. Because I'm pretty sure once the once uh, once uh, the insurance says something to him about putting that stuff on a truck, I'm pretty sure that he'll follow right along with it, and then we'll start having all that beeping and stuff going off and all that stuff. I mean, technically, Rusty, I don't have to have an ELD for, but he wants me to run ELD. I don't have to have it. I wish I didn't have to have it, but. It is what it is. One of these one of these days maybe I can find me a job with none of that crap. Stuck at sixty five at FedEx. Uh, sixty five is just ugh. it's hard to get out there and pass somebody up at sixty five. Now honestly, honestly with Andrews you know, it's a tanker company, so uh, a lot of that stuff was dropping hook. 99% of it was dropping hook because you had your guys around the house that you had your guys that stayed around Beaumont. I, my terminal was in Beaumont. So you had your guys that was in Beaumont that would go load trailers all day long and bring it back to the yard. And then as you was passing through Beaumont, you'd drop an empty one, pick up a loaded one and keep on going, you know, wherever it was going to. And, uh, I, I really did enjoy that because I was always moving. It was never, there was several times where I had to sit around and they paid me for it, but it was always moving. It was nonstop, nonstop moving. For instance, one week I was loaded already, brought the load home. I never did a 34 on the road. I was always home. <sighs> Shoot. I was always home every weekend. So I left out Sunday evening. I went up here to, uh, uh, right on the north side of Cincinnati. I forgot the little town there. Uh, about dropped a load there on Monday morning. I left there Monday after I got unloaded. I drove from here, from uh, from just say Cincinnati, all the way to Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. We got another, uh, uh, Andrews had another yard over there in Aliquippa. So I went all the way over to Aliquippa. I dropped that empty trailer, picked up a loaded trailer, and brought it up to uh, New Hampshire, uh, up there north of Massachusetts. And then, uh, let's see, that was Monday. That was Tuesday. I got unloaded Tuesday. Come back, I was back at the yard in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania on Wednesday, about 5 o'clock or something like that. Well, 
another driver was bringing me another trailer from Newellton or Newell, West Virginia, or Newellton, West Virginia, and he was bringing he loaded it over there like a Chevron or Exxon or something like that, and brought it to me in Aliquippa. Well, while I was doing my thirty, while, while I was doing my ten hour break, they was doing a service on my truck. So that night, I was able to start back out like at midnight that night. So I must have got back around about 2 o'clock. So I started back out at midnight with the trailer and left there Thursday at midnight. Drove down to uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. I unloaded Knoxville, Tennessee Thursday morning. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for the yawning, but uh, anyways, I unloaded that that Knoxville, Tennessee, Thursday morning, and then I just stayed there in Knoxville because by the time I got unloaded, I only had like three more hours that I could drive for the day, and I didn't want to sit there and fight the uh, traffic going through uh, uh, Chattanooga, uh, yeah, Chattanooga and all that. So I just stayed in Knoxville. So then I got up Friday morning or Thursday night. It was about 9 o'clock, I guess, something like that. I left Knoxville, drove all the way home to do my 34 at the house. And uh, I got home Friday morning, just say around about 9 o'clock or something. They called me up Friday evening. Said they had a load that needed to be delivered in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, out of Beaumont, on Monday. The load had to be there on Monday. So I was all right, cool, whatever. So I left my house Saturday evening. Well, my 34 came good, and uh, I just deleted. When my 34 came good, I drove down to Beaumont, swapped trailers, and then drove all day, or uh, drove pretty much all night on Saturday. And then woke up Sunday evening and drove the rest of the way over there. And I was sitting there in Fort Lauderdale Monday morning to get unloaded. When I got my check off of that load out there, it was $3,700 for that one week that I left. And I went to Ohio and went across there to New Hampshire, came back to Aliquippa and came down to Knoxville and then went home. That was like $3,700 for one week. All right. That's the most money I've ever made in one week. Uh hauling oil and stuff with a tanker and stuff. That's company driver too, y'all. This ain't this ain't owner operator money talk or nothing like that. But that's that's <coughs> that's really good money for a company driver. But you have to if you wanna where my water go. If you wanna make really good money out here on the road as a company driver, you have to stay loaded and you have to keep moving. You can't be Stopping at the truck stops every day, gum, every town you come to, you can't you can't be doing any of that. Uh, would I ever go back to open deck? I'd love to. I would love to go back to open deck. Trucking with fits. I loved pulling like low boy and stuff. I love that. All right, Raymond, I appreciate you, buddy. Stay, out, uh, stay safe out there, man. God bless you, too. But, yeah, I'd love to go back open deck, and the reason why is because I've done a lot. I, honestly, I've done lost a lot of weight, so I, I, the more I can get out of the truck and do more physical labor and stuff like that, the better I feel. But all my life growing up, that's all my dad ever did was open deck, uh, flatbed, Pulled a skateboard pretty much all of my life. That's what my dad did. He pulled a... Uh, he pulled a... Uh, cardboard bells. Like, you see them paper bells that behind Walmart and stuff? That's what my daddy did for... Shoot, man, I don't know how many years he done that. 19 years? 16 years? I don't know. Very long time. Very, very long time. But that's all he did growing, when I was growing up.
off the truck and come. Man, this can be any topic y'all want it to be. Been watching for about six months. I started Carnivore Diet on December 1st. It's been a life changer. Took me a few of your videos to notice you have been doing it. <clears throat> took me a few took me a few of your videos to notice you have been doing it you have been doing it swell oh oh as well oh okay as well oh i've been doing well i can't say that i've been strictly on it <laughs> i was strictly on it for for a year uh i started back in 2022 september just say September, October was, just say October 2022 is when I fully started on it. And I did it for basically a year. Uh, what's up, James Amos? Uh, <laughs> all right, Timmy. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, I did it for a solid year. Now, when I say I was doing it strict for a solid year, I'm talking about just meat. Meat, eggs, bacon. Like beef, eggs, and bacon. That's it. Uh, now, y'all see me eat the jalapeno poppers with the cream cheese and all that stuff. That's, to me, that's that's not staying strictly on it, you know, because cream cheese and all that jalapeno and stuff like that. But it's not bad for you. It's good to hold food for you. But... Uh, I ain't got my cooker, so today I had to stop and buy me something, and it wasn't carnivore at all. So I'm kind of feeling it right now. And I know when I don't eat the right stuff, I know when it ain't right, because I feel it in every orifice of my body. It's funny how that works. But um, if, if people would just do it, if people would just do it, I know it's expensive, but you ain't got to go out there and buy the most expensive stuff to eat carnivore. Ground meat is great for you. Cook it down, add a little bit of cheese into it, salt, pepper, eat the stuff. But carnivore is a life changer. Hey, Scott, I'm over here in uh, uh, Groveport right here. Uh, outside of Columbus. I put water loads Atlanta to Greensboro, North Carolina. Cool deal. Uh, heck yeah, random, randomness. Beard is looking great. Man, let me tell y'all something about my beard here. <laughs> We're going to get on to some men talk here now. Some real men talk. So, we got this place. We got this place. It's called... Uh, Man cave. It's called man cave. They're around the house. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a bar or something like that. Couldn't find out it was a trimming, a uh, haircutting place. So, told my wife, I said, man, I wanted to, I want, I said, I wanted to go, uh, I want to go over and see what this place is all about, you know, because you think man cave, you know, the, the, it's got a big mustache, has their logo out front. You're thinking some place you walk into has got cigar smell, big tattooed up people. You know, these men out there giving these other other men shaping their beards and stuff up. You know, man, man cave, you know, that's what I'm thinking. So I walk in there and it's women up in there doing some, it's just a regular barber shop. I'm like, oh no, this ain't going to be good right here. Cause I don't want nobody touching my beard, you know. So I went in there and I, I was messing with that girl. And I was like, you know what you're doing, right? And she's like, yeah, I know. I, I think I can get it done. I was like, oh, no. I said, no, you know, you ain't going to think. I said, you need to let me know if you know what you're doing. And uh, and um, she's like, oh, my husband's got a beard. And I, I, I mess with his, so don't worry. I ain't going to mess it up. I was like, okay, good. And I told her I wanted to, uh, I wanted, my family, my grandfather was a very, very hairy person. All right, so 
his beard would get get you know a little bit longer than this but it would get really really wide you know my family is known for having a big girth in their beard big bushy beard you know and um, i told her that i just wanted to the little flyaways you know i wanted all that stuff to be just be kind of straightened up and then have it rounded at the bottom you know it looks like it's getting about time for me to go back over there to her but anyways long story short she trimmed that thing up son and she she's like you want me to shave your head i was like well heck i ain't got much much hair up there anyways and i used to i used to straight razor my head and have it really really smooth and she and that's what i thought she was talking about and she's like yeah i can shave your head for you real fast i'm like okay go ahead and do that too while you at it so i've been having this sitting over here because i wanted to talk about this so uh she pulls out her electric razor and starts shaving my head. And man, when she got done, I was like, that's that's, that's actually kind of nice, you know? So immediately when we left there, me and my wife, when we left there, we had to go buy me an electric razor. This is the uh, uh, the Remington. It's a Remington. Uh, oh man, what was this? What was this one called? The Remington Balder or something like that. Uh, but this little thing right here, man, if you ain't got no hair on your head and you like to keep your head shaved like this, go get y'all one of these little Remington. It's a little five blade deal. It's got a little home button. I mean, it charges, you charge it up. Uh, it's This thing right here is absolutely awesome. It's called a Remington balder uh uh heck i can't remember it's something like that anyways these things right here are actually pretty cool man you just turn that thing on and just get after it every day every morning when i get up i'll just five minutes cut your hair be done with it but i've been using that thing ever since i bought that thing man that thing is awesome but um yeah, the other day at my uncle's funeral, I had another uncle of mine. Uh, no, it's not raining up here where I'm at, no. Uh, Bella just got done eating, if you heard all that. But anyways, uh, my or another one of my uncles, man, he had his beard. Like, it was almost down to his belly button. And I was like, oh, yeah. If he can grow one like that, I've he's my family. I've got to be able to grow one like that, too. But yeah, a lot of people's been commenting about my beard here lately. It's uh, it's growing good. It's this is probably one of the best ones I've ever grown. Now all my lines and stuff like that, I need to kind of, kind of cut them a little bit because they kind of, my line, my line naturally goes like right here, and I'm usually naturally bald right there in that spot on each side. But uh, I also I get a lot of I get a lot of hair up in this area too. I like to keep shaved off and stuff, but anyways, that's enough of that. <laughs> uh, but no, it's more. Okay, James, you said you started with flatbed and have ran reefers, okay? Yeah, I'd love to run reefers one time. Like, I was telling my brother earlier on the phone, you know, you got to keep it in trucking. You get kind of bored of it if you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. So, to keep it fresh, you know, just go to pulling something else. I really wish my boss man would go buy some dry vans or something, and he can get in with Chevron or something like that and just go pick up uh, package loads. And we can deliver package loads and dry vans and stuff, but uh, he don't want to do all that. Uh, mine is strict meat and eggs, but meat includes chicken, pork, shrimp, lamb. Did not go so well. That was it. That was an acquired taste. You know what? Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I used to not eat as meat-wise that I'll eat now because my palate over the years, over the year of doing carnivore, my palate changed. And lamb, oh my gosh, man, that stuff, to me, that stuff is absolutely delicious. I love lamb. Uh, but I eat all that stuff too, pork, chicken, shrimp, all that stuff too.
I appreciate your Bible verses at the beginning of each video. Please keep taking videos. Uh, they are going to stay there. What's going on with things here? But yeah, I'd, I'd love to get into reefer unit, pulling reefers and stuff, just because I think they're absolutely, just absolutely cool. Going down the road at nighttime, all lit up. See them running all them different hours and stuff like that. Like, like I do a lot of split breaking and stuff. You know, and I do that already doing this, doing this uh, fuel hauling. Watching from Australia. I appreciate you there. I don't want to butcher your name, Geoff. Is pulling fuel easy? Uh, 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 it's easy for me. Uh, when I first started, it was a little bit challenging because I didn't know anything about it. I've never, never pulled tank before in my life. And they gave me the opportunity to come over here and learn how to do it. And they taught me how to do it. And, and it's very, very easy for me now. When I first started, I mean, it's pulling fuel and hauling fuel is very easy. What the what's difficult about it is is going to the loading racks and these computers and learning how to use the computers, learning how to load the trailer, stuff like that. Now, if you're tech savvy and you can you can get on the screen and do what you need to do, it's very simple. Uh, it was very simple for me because that's what I grew up around. Uh, we have some guys, I have some guys that I train sometimes and they are, they're just not tech savvy, you know, and they just can't get it and they just didn't make it, you know, but the, the, the hauling fuel, delivering fuel, that's the easy part. It's the part of getting the, the load on the trailer, dealing with them computers and stuff. You get that down pack and you get that, um, you get that, uh, you get that all lined up and, and learned how to do that. It's like riding a bus, or you never forget once you once you learn how to do it. No, I'm not going to Mets uh, in high for North Carolina. What's going on, Mr. Brian? But pulling fuel can be very very easy. But there is days, there is days like like I live in the South. Okay, so. During hurricane season and stuff like that, and I, I don't even think I've even talked about this before, and that was something at one point in time I was going to talk about on some videos, but <clears throat> there is, uh, you know, down south we have hurricanes and stuff, and hurricane come through or something like that, and we can get into state of emergencies, and when we get into a state of emergency, <laughs> it can be, uh, it can be very stressful because you get to the loading rack. You got trucks waiting to get loaded. You may be sitting there. I remember when that hurricane come through over there at Lake Charles. I forgot which one it was. Um, I sat at the loading rack for like six hours for one load. Six hours for one load. And still had two or three loads after that to pull. But state of emergency, you basically run. <laughs> you run until they're done or you run until you can't run no more. That's usually how it goes with state of emergencies. Oh yeah, yeah, I got out there. Um, see, here, Monday, Monday I was off, so I was mowing grass on Monday. So yeah, I got out there Monday and cranked it up and let it run for about thirty minutes or so. I do, I do that at least once a week. Um. Some days you'll get to the loading rack and you'll you'll pull up on the lane and uh, you won't have no allocation. Allocation is basically say I'm I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna load under under a customer for shell. Well if that customer ain't got allocation to pull any more fuel off a of shell, that means that means they're only allocated so much uh, uh, a month to pull. And it's usually only worse at the end of the month, uh, when it's getting close to the end of the month. So 
they'll they'll already run out of what they was allocated to pull, and they ain't paid nothing back to them yet, so they they can't get no more from them. Well, then you'll have to pull off the lane and go back around and get back in line and wait again for for them to call you back with different suppliers, allocation and stuff. Until you get the right allocation or until somebody pays our bill and then you can get your fuel loaded. Now, that stuff right there, that stuff right there can really aggravate you because you only have 14 hours in a day. So if you sit there and messing around with that stuff for two hours when you should only been there for 30 minutes, then that can really get you aggravated and make a short day very long. Uh, why do you open all the tanks when you're only dropping from one or two compartments? Uh, I'm talking about the cover on those on those tank things. Okay, so why do you open all the tanks when you're only dropping from like one or two compartments? I'm talking about the cover on those tank those tank things. You talking about the covers? You talking about the tanks in the ground? If you're talking about the tanks and like the, the, the red, green and red, yellow and white lids and stuff, if you talk about that, then usually Okay, so you're the ones on the trailer. You put a bucket under them when you're done. Why do you open all the tanks? You're only dropping from like one or two compartments. Obviously, because I'm going to be moving to them tanks, them, them compartments next to unload them. I put the bucket up underneath the when you're when you're moving a hose from one compartment to the next. You're supposed to put the bucket up underneath it because the DEQ, the Department of uh, Department of DEQ, Department of Quantities or something like that, Department of Quality or something like that. If they if they see you drop one speck of gasoline or diesel on the ground, they want to be freaking fining you for it. So you put your bucket up underneath all that stuff to keep that stuff from happening. Now, is it going to happen? Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, question. When traffic is super slow, sometimes big chunks will slow to a crawl. I'm guessing to not stop and start over and over. Is that right? Uh, somewhat, yes. If, if, I'm, if I come up to backup traffic, I'll put it in low gear and I'll just let the truck crawl because I don't want to keep pushing the clutch and letting off of it. Pushing the clutch, letting off of it. You wear your clutch out like that. Uh, if if it starts moving a little faster, just I just keep going up gears, but I let it just keep crawling. That way, I don't have to come to a complete stop and be using the clutch. Honestly, y'all, or honestly, that question right there, that clutch right there, I don't know how many foot pounds of tor uh, foot pounds it is, but them things are very heavy. So you're constantly pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and popping up on that clutch. Your leg go to killing you really quickly. Yeah, usually when I unload that compartment, I put the bucket there, I move the loading head onto the next compartment and get it started. And then I'll go back and then go ahead and cap everything off and then move the bucket over to the next one. Right. He probably, like I do, you open them all up because you're, you're going to drop all the fuel. Uh, you're going to drop all the fuel into them tanks. But 
maybe his company, maybe his company only allows them to hook up one hose at a time. So maybe his company only says, hey, you can you, you got these three products here, but you can only unload one product at a time. So so maybe that's why he was doing it, but he was gonna unload the whole trailer right there. He's just he only used one hose. Which that ain't no big deal or nothing like that. Does any rack still have top loading? Uh, I have never. The only rack that I know has top loading is the oil rack uh, at Exxon in Beaumont. That's the only place that I know that's got top loading right. Um, there used to be a Chevron in South Carolina or somewhere. I can't remember where it was actually at. I believe they was a top loading rack too. Dow. At the very beginning of this, I told y'all that I was I was supposed to be here today to unload this load here, but I got held up when I was loading this load here. I got held up for like six hours. So I was not able to make it here until after the cutoff time from them. So they told me I ought to just be too late. We'll just get you Friday morning. So I was like, right, that's cool, whatever. I was actually supposed to be back in Louisville this evening to reload a load in the morning out of Chevron going down to Clanton, Alabama. Now, at Chevron in Louisville, you do all the loading. You don't, it's not like the Chevron at Port Arthur. When I go down there, I just pull up on the rack. I go inside the little driver's room. Or I go do whatever. And they actually got people there that load the trailer for me. They load everything. But the one up here in Louisville, uh, Chevron, you do everything. You load your own trailer. You take the samples. You do all that stuff. I thought that was actually pretty freaking awesome right there. I hate it that I had to miss out on that load out there, too. <clears throat> I've done did three loads out of Louisville over the last month, just say. And, uh... Uh... I done did three loads of, uh, out of Louisville like that. And the first load, of course, they had to teach me how to load the trailer. The second load, they still had to teach me a little bit because it's 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 totally different from when you're loading the trailer yourself. And then the third time I went up in there, and the, cool, the other cool thing about it in Louisville is, is the Port Arthur Chevron, they don't open their, they don't, they don't start letting you come in there until 6.30 in the morning. And them guys load, you know. But over here in Louisville, them guys show up at 1 o'clock in the morning. You can come in there. And there ain't really no set appointment time. You come in there. You're on the book all ready to get loaded. You just sign in, give them your paperwork. And they say, all right, pull on lane two. And you pull on lane two, get your load, load your load. And as soon as you get done loading your load, your paperwork's in your hand, you're gone. You're usually there for about an hour, hour and a half. If everything's going all right, about an hour and a half, and then you're out of there. And man, third time I went to Louisville, that's how it was. It was I was like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, would it bother you if, if a four-wheeler came up beside you and in the other lane and did the same thing, drive slow to avoid stop, starting to ride the clutch? No, it wouldn't bother me. Uh, now, if we're going down the highway at 70 miles an hour, don't ride right beside me, but that bothers me because people just don't realize that Big truck can have a blowout, and once that happens, I mean, that truck can go wherever, you know. But, uh, no, that don't bother me if, if, we're, if we're in traffic like that. I mean, I, sometimes uh, sometimes you can get, I, I ain't going to lie about this. I had a guy one time start a conversation with me. He was in a convertible, and I was riding. And usually when I get in traffic like that, I'll roll the windows down. And get fresh air, you know, just sitting there riding. And this dude in this convertible coming beside me over there, and we just creep, we just creeping up, you know, through traffic there. And he's, we're talking back and forth out the window, and he's hollering at me, just having a conversation going down the road. 
and I think he was wanting to know what they was talking about up there, you know, on the radio. Um, but no, it, it wouldn't bother me if, if we're going like in traffic like that, like real slow. I started hauling fuel in the seventies. All the terminals in the Port Tampa had only only top loading. Oh yeah, I seventies too. Well, all right, let me go back to that too. Uh, because you asked, or whether rather four wheelers stay out of the way, you know, uh, it wouldn't bother me them being right there, but if I did need to move over or something like that, that, that would be the one. That would be one thing that would say, hey, "Look, now you need to get out of my way," you know, because usually a big truck needs has got a blinker on. We, we're not just wanting to change lanes because we want to. We need to, you know, and. Uh, some some people just don't understand that stuff. Some people just some people just think that blinker's there for 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 entertainment or something. That ribeye looked like some tasty goodness. Oh man, that thing was good. <laughs> that ribeye was real good the other day. Uh, have I ever probed out? I've hauled a lot of fuel over the last nine years. I don't, I don't know if I've ever hit the probe or not. I can't remember. I want to say I have. But then I, then again, I want to say I haven't because the time that I want to say I have, I think it was just, you know, on these, uh, these, these compartment trailers, you got, uh, like my compartment trailer is a five hole. It's got five compartments. But it's got a six compartment blocker up there. So the series of wires up there can handle six compartments, but I've only got five. So the last compartment has got a blocker in the line. And sometimes that blocker wants to act up and it'll go out and it'll say on your scully box, it'll say that your number six compartment, the probe is out. When you don't even have six compartments, the reason why it does that is because that blocker went out, and that can really mess your day all up when that when that pro when that blocker goes out. I don't think I've ever actually probed out like hit the probe with product, but I, I know I've had problems out of that number six probe blocker. Early days, top loading gasoline, Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Sit go terminal boy, talk about having a bus <laughs> after finishing. Last one up here before they converted them to bottom. <clears throat> probing out. Probing out is where okay, so you got you got a compartment, all right? You got your compartment, your compartment trailer, and you're loading it from the bottom right here, all right. In the top of the trailer, there's a probe that hangs down in there. And what that probe is there for is if that liquid hits it and it gets wet, it shuts the loading off so you don't blow it off the top of the trailer. All right. So what he's talking about is he's asking if I ever probed out, have I ever loaded a compartment so much to where it actually bumped the probe and shut, shut the rack down? Uh, that's what that is. Uh, now there's rules about that stuff. If you do do stuff like that and you do hit the probe and stuff like that, it, well, it depends on, I know I keep saying stuff like that. That's another thing that Mr. Hader was talking about. <laughs> I got way off on a different subject. Line, but anyways, anyways, so different places, uh, will have different rules about that stuff. If you hit the probe, they might suspend you out of there for three days or something like that. But the second time you hit the probe, they might suspend you out of there for like a month. And then the third time you hit it, you might as well not even worry about coming back in there because they ain't going to let you back in there because you're you're overloading the trailer. And how people overload the trailer and stuff is, is either they're putting the wrong amount in that compartment uh, or they're going to a store and not unloading everything 
in that compartment. Then they go back to the loading rack and they start loading behind what's left up in there and they just they probe out because it's got more more liquid in it than what what it's supposed to be in there. It wasn't completely empty. So people people do do that. I see that happen. We had one of our guys do it here recently. And uh it's one of them things. You just gotta got to you got to unload the dead gum trailer. You gotta know it's empty. If you did it, would shut your. If you did it, would shut your feeling down. Yep, I get it. Exactly right. I got to get some sleep. I enjoy your program. Love Rusty Bella. It was great. I appreciate your faith. Keep it up, champ. All right, thank you, Mr. Brian. Uh, good night. Have some good sleep. I won't be much longer on here. That's for sure. I was supposed to get off thirty minutes ago. <laughs> but yeah, you got these these terminals and everything. They got all of their different kinds of rules. Some terminals. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you on this. Some terminals you can go in there in a pair of underwear and socks, or you can go in there barefooted in a pair of underwear, and you can be talking on your phone while you're sitting there loading the fuel. They could care less. But some terminals, man, it's almost like you better be in a a, a, a CEO suit when you go in that place to get a load of fuel. I'm talking about hard hat, safety glasses, steel toe boots. Fire retardant shirt, pants, your your underwear better be fire retardant. Some of these places you go into. Some of these places are so laid back, and then some of these places are just straight up freaking some of these places are just straight up freaking buttholes. <laughs> what's up, uh, uh uh Cho Cho? What's up, my brother from another mother? Where you at, boy? From East Texas, work out of Bozier. I look for your truck when riding through Shreveport all the time. <laughs> you at home? What you at home for? What happened to that load going up there to, uh, to Massachusetts? But these uh these loading racks are set up for that, that that probe thing we're talking about. Uh, they're set up to where once you hit that probe, it shuts your lane down. That way, you're not blowing, you're not doming out. And doming out is where you blow it off the top of your trailer. Uh, back in the day when they didn't have all this different stuff like that, you know. Uh, So I got canceled. You're doing your 34. Leave Saturday. Headed to Las Vegas. You go ahead, hand. Okay. Why in the world did that redo? <coughs> but uh, back in the day, they didn't have all the all the electronics and all that different stuff to to keep that stuff from happening. They did, but not as it happened more frequently back then but nowadays it's it's kind of hard to if you go to a store and you unload that whole trailer and you know that trailer's unloaded we know our trailer's unloaded we got sight glasses that we watch the product of the fuel come out of the trailer you know you tap on the side of the trailer you can hear you can hear what a full compartment sounds like and what an empty compartment sounds like you after you've been doing it for a while you just know the sounds but uh that that's pretty much the only way that you're gonna you're gonna blow it off the top of the trailer is if you get to a rack and the scully system ain't working and you're putting in the you left product in the trailer and then you load on top of that and blow it off the top. Uh another question some people have is what happens if you get to a you know to a store or something like that and you unload the fuel in the wrong spot? I've done that once before. I made I got videos on it. But uh, we'll take all that fuel out of them tanks after it's contaminated, and we'll bring it all down to Port Allen to Placid, and Placid to buy it back as, uh, oh, crap. 
Oh man, I don't forgot what they call that stuff. But anyways, they'll buy it back, and then they'll take and they'll take and run it through their refinery, refine that stuff, and separate it all back out to what it's supposed to be, and then they'll just make whatever they got to make out of it, and then resell it. If you're dropping fuel at a gas station and tank is filled before your compartment is empty, what's the next move? I usually shut my valve off. Like, go ahead and shut the valve on the trailer. And then I'll walk over there to my tank and I'll go ahead and slightly let the uh, the the lock up on my, my hog nose. I'll slowly let it off and then slowly pick that drop gun up so it can get some air. And I'll get make sure my line can get cleaned out of fuel. Uh, or at least get cleaned out enough to where I can put the cap on it. But a lot of the times, I filled up a tank the other day at a little store. <clears throat> and I'm talking about when I filled it up, it was slapped to the top full. And uh, so what I had to do was I, I had to open up my drop gun, pick it up a little bit, and let the fuel go in that spill pan that's around the pipe that we go into. It's got a spill pan. I let that fuel go in that spill pan. And then I would take my cup, I got a, a little dipper, that I just dip all that out, put it in my bucket, and then just kept doing that until I was able to get my hose off the trailer, cap it, and then cap the other end, and then pick that freaking hose full of fuel up onto the side of the trailer. And once I got done dipping all that gas out of that catch pan, uh, I put my cap on top of the tank, and I just took the rest of the gasoline. I had my bucket just dumped in the in in the other the other tank, the other gas tank. Um, but then, like the rest, I only had like 200 gallons left of fuel that wouldn't fit. So I just brought it to the next store with me. It was the same customer. I was already splitting the load. I just went to the next store and just brought the rest of it over there. <clears throat> A lot of the times. Uh, a lot of the times when you're when you're putting fuel in the ground, the uh, the tanks will pressure up. As you're dropping fuel in the ground, you got a vent that's going to be somewhere by the store or by where you're at, and that vent is steadily letting fumes and stuff out. You have to have a vent because that pressure has got to go somewhere. And then when 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 normal operation, you're sucking gas through the pumps. It's sucking air through that vent over there. So you have to have a vent on a tank because it pressurizes and it, it, it relaxes. All right. So as you're unloading that fuel in the ground, sometimes them vent pipes can be stopped up and it will pressure up inside the tank so much to where it acts like the tank is full when it's really not. So you can just crack your ears open and let it get, uh, let it get a little bit of air. And then once it gets that little bit of air, it'll finish cleaning your line out and stuff like that. Or it will finish draining the trailer down. Um, a lot of these tanks has got 90% floats on them. And man, I hate them things. Because you hit that 90% float. Now there's ways to get around this 90% float that you're not supposed to do. People do it. I've never, well, I ain't going to say I've never done it. I've done it once or twice in my life. But uh, you're not supposed to do it. But Usually, once you hit that 90% float, that sucker closes off, you ain't dropping no more fuel in it. I mean, you can slowly get some fuel in it, but you'll be there for days trying to finish on it. But uh, to answer that question, what do I do? You know, what's my next move after the compartment gets, uh, after the, the drop in the ground gets full? Shut my, shut my head off, and then I, I, I do what I can, I do what I gotta do to get the fuel out of my hose, if that makes any sense. Done that before, what a pain in the butt that is, you ain't lying. It's a pain in the, oh my gosh, man, and we got these certain customers. We got these certain customers that all, every freaking load you seem to pull for them, never wants to fit, especially on a Saturday. On the weekend, last load, here we go, stuff ain't gonna fit. That's usually how it, usually how it works out.
Uh, Cho, you got that load? You got that load already, or you going to pick it up when? Hauled for many years up here in Massachusetts, retired now. All those drivers had five gallon buckets with funnels. Always residual fuel tank, fuel left in tank at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about there, Kevin. Well, we've all done it. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say, but we've all done it. Dang, I'm down to 35 degrees up here now. I've been around, Brad. I'm doing great. I'm doing better than I deserve. Put it that way. If you're breathing today, you're doing better than you deserve. That's a promise. And you can still, that, that can still happen today too. Uh, Florida Air Voters said that back in the day, uh, you didn't have vapor recovery. You get a shower, that fuel would go up the uh, go up the vent pipe and come out of the vent pipe and it spray down on you. I've had that happen several times at an old store that we go to over here. Or we don't go to it no more, but we used to go to an old store that when you fill this tank up, uh, when you knew you was getting close to filling it up, you started watching their vent pipe. And the moment you started seeing a little bit of that spit and sputter come out of it, you better shut it down because you was about to get wet. That's another thing a lot of people comment. Oh my gosh, that one video I did of me unloading at that store, every freaking everybody comments, where's your vent pipe? Or where's your vapor recovery? Where's your vapor recovery? We don't have to use vapor recovery in Louisiana in rural areas. If we're in rural areas, we don't have to use vapor recovery. Now, if we're in the big cities like Alexandria, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, Lake Charles, New Orleans, Shreveport, Monroe, you got to use your vapor recovery for all that stuff. But when we're out in the rural areas, we don't have to use all that stuff. And there's a lot of stores. Uh, there's a lot of stores in Louisiana that don't even have vapor recovery at all. Uh, we got a whole bunch of stores like that we go to that don't even have vapor recovery. So how are you supposed to hook up vapor recovery to something that's not even there, you know? They don't, like, we got some stores that don't even have Vita Roots for you to even go check the Vita Root to see, you know, to get the little printout. We got, uh, we got several of them stores in Louisiana like that that don't even have that because they're so old. <laughs> I appreciate you there, Brad. I'm trying to get back into getting these videos done. I, I started one. I got one right now that's already done up. I just ain't posted yet. I got one I've been working on yesterday and today. But I don't know how that one's going to turn out because uh, I'm just trying to figure these daggum cameras out still. Oh, man. Doug. <laughs> Trust me, it does. Um, <clears throat> short story here. All right. Tell y'all a story before I, before I call it night here. My little brother, my little brother works for us. Of course, y'all know that. When he uh, when he first started with us, I trained him. We uh, went down to a CarMax in Baton Rouge down there uh, to deliver a load of gas one day, and the 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 setup to all this stuff was real crazy. It was funny. We get down there, 
to CarMax. And uh, the drops, there, there's no above ground tank or nothing like that. It's in ground tank. So the drop is out there in the middle of the parking lot where these people park the vehicles at, you know? But there's that one parking spot that has cones around it that nobody is supposed to park in. Well, obviously this person didn't realize that's what that parking spot was for and they parked their truck there. This was a worker there, parked their vehicle there and they went on vacation, all right? So we finally, uh, we finally got a hold of somebody and they was like, oh, well, I'm on vacation right now. I'm not even in the state of Louisiana. So my brother was like, all right, well, that's fine. We're going, we're going to get this moved. They had a auto shop for the uh, CarMax right there next to, next to them there where they did all the work to the cars at. And uh, my brother <laughs> my brother goes over there and gets a floor jack from him, rolls that sucker out there. We jack up the back of that truck or that car or whatever it was, and uh, we jacked up the back of it, and we pushed the car out of the way, you know, pushed the side of it out of the way. That way we can get to that drop to unload the gas, all right? And when you brought gas over there to this place, you didn't ever bring a full load because it was just a small tank, you know? And... Um, it wasn't even a car max. It was like a Hertz rental car or something like that. It was a rental place. And so I'm telling my brother, you know, when you're unloading that fuel and everything, the, the, uh, you can watch the fuel as it's unloading. You can watch it through the sight glass. And when it gets in empty, you can see it flowing past the sight glass. He's all right, cool, whatever. So we're standing there talking. Well, this tank liked to pressure up and he walks over to the side of the trailer. He says, Hey, this thing's done. I was like, all right, well move your, move your department to the next one. So he closes off or no, I'm sorry. What I like to do when I unload a trailer is I like to close the valve off first, then open up the ears, pull the hose off and then slowly open the valve back up to let it finish draining down in my hose there. Well, this gubernut that day decided he was going to go run over there and just pull the hose off and then close the valve on the side of the trailer. And um, he found out that day that when a tank pressures up, it can actually, if the trailer may not have but 10 more gallons in the pipe or 20 more gallons in the pipe and in the bottom of the trailer, but the pressure can be so pressurized up blowing back in the trailer that it, it'll actually hold that last 20 gallons in the trailer and when he cracked them ears and pulled that hose off of there it gave it air and the rest of that fuel come out of the trailer on him i'm talking about it soaked him from head to toe because he tried slamming that hose back on the side of the trailer and then it just blew it all up everywhere you know i'm talking about from his head to his feet was solid gas man there was gas running through the parking lot we, we got it all stopped, got it all soaked up and everything. And, man, he's walking around the, the parking lot freaking uh, almost butt naked out there in the parking lot. And he's burning because that gas really burns your skin and stuff when it gets on you. Travis, I'm over here in um... crap. Groveport. Groveport over here outside of Columbus. But anyways, that gas, that gas burns you, you know? And, uh, man, he got all cleaned up. I had to give him some extra clothes that I had in the trunk. And, uh, y'all should have seen, <laughs> that was back when I, when I, that was back when I weighed 300 pounds and was wearing 44s and 3X shirts and stuff. Y'all should have seen him, his little skinny, skinny bony self trying to, uh, walk around with my clothes on. But we took all of his gassy clothes and we threw them suckers away. And boy, he was, he still smelled like gas when he got in the truck. But it was like his, probably his second week on the job. And uh, <laughs> he got him a good gas bath. 
I've never had one. I don't, I don't think. I don't think I've ever had one. I've gotten diesel on it before, but I've never actually had a bath in it. Just north of me. Where you at it there? But he learned his lesson really quick. You don't ever pull a hose off the side of that trailer if that valve is not closed. If that, it don't matter if you're pumping off a load. It don't matter if you're dropping, your gravity's dropping a load. Don't ever unhook a hose off a trailer without freaking closing that valve first. That's just how it is. You don't do that stuff. But he learned, he learned real quick. Really quick. <clears throat> Where you at just north of me, Travis? You all right? Upper Sandusky, going to Delta, Ohio to load a coil. Oh, go ahead. Who do you drive for? I know TMC loads a lot of them coils and stuff. I was pulling that oil down there to that, that place in Kentucky that Logan Aluminum, a bunch of them TMC trucks will be over there at that uh, Logan Aluminum plays getting them, getting them aluminum, aluminum rolls and stuff. Oh, you drop for yourself? Okay. I want to load a coil. All right, y'all. We've been at it for three hours now. I'm getting tired. <laughs> We're going to call it quits on this one, y'all. Bella. Bella. You want to say anything to him before we get off the video? No? No. <laughs> Hey, Mr. George, we're doing good. We're all doing good, man. You come in right here at the end. Hey, Travis, be careful headed up there, man. Taking it to Mansfield, Mansfield, where at? Mansfield what? Where are you taking that coal to, Mansfield or what? Ohio? Okay, okay. That's cool. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Brad. I'm going to try to. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me for three hours, almost three hours. I'm getting tired. I'm about to go to bed, y'all. <laughs> We're going to let Bella out one more time, and I'm going to climb back there, get into bed and everything, and hopefully get this stuff unloaded in the morning and roll on back south. Do hope y'all enjoyed this little live right here. I didn't expect it to be that long, but I do appreciate y'all coming in and hanging out. We'll see y'all on the next video. Or we'll see y'all on the next live, whatever. I'm going to drop the other video probably this weekend. I don't know yet. But I uh, appreciate you, Scott. Night, Uncle John. It was good seeing you the other day. Kevin, be safe, man. Doug, be safe, man. Y'all have a blessed one. I'll see y'all later. Peace. Oh, crap. Here we go. How to turn this off. There it is. All right. We'll see y'all later.